Christmas, a holiday that celebrates the birth of Jesus, love, joy, hope, and of course, presents. But unfortunately, not everyone experiences that. Today, we'll get to witness the reality of two different families on Christmas Day. Let's take a look at John and his family. Okay, kids, it's that time. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride one bus open sleigh. Yeah, finally, it's time to open these gifts. Yeah, it's been so long, it's killing me. Uh, Mom, where are the rest of the gifts? Yeah, I only see a few under the Christmas tree. Why don't you guys open up your gifts and see what you got? Uh, what's happening? What's the matter, Becky? This is for Mom. This is for Dad. Why do we only get one gift? Yeah, this isn't fair. We usually have more on Christmas. Why are you being so cheap? Excuse me! You should be thankful for what you get. Do you know how much we spent on that one gift of yours? And for all that, all we get is just complaint? No! You should be thankful for what you get. You know what? You two go to your room now. Really, Dad? It's Christmas. I don't want to hear it. Go to your room now. Honey. Are these really my kids? Our kids? Can you believe this, Jennifer? I think we messed up with the way we used to shower them with gifts. Big time. They have no appreciation for anything. John, I hear what you're saying. I think you were a bit too harsh on them, though. Are you kidding? Do you know how much I spent on these gifts? And the time and energy it took me to find them in stock, get them delivered on time, and make sure they were the right item. Uh, I mean, what have we been teaching them? I know, I know. I do think we need to take take a step back and change the way we lavish them with gifts. Christmas should be about giving rather than acquiring things. Maybe we should try being a source of blessing and start giving to others for a change. You know, I think you're right. We need to change our approach. We need God to give us wisdom on this. Hey, why don't we pray about it? God, we thank you for showing us that we need to be grateful for what we have and how you've blessed us as a family. Jesus, you're the best gift we can have for Christmas, and we pray you will show us how to teach our kids to be a source of hope and blessing to others as well. Amen. Whew, whoa, is that the time? Whew. Okay, kids, pack up your things and help bring, to the, bring the food to the car. We're going to be visiting the weekend at Grandpa's. Meanwhile, just a few miles away, there was another family having a very different conversation this Christmas. Meet David's family. You can come in. Hi, what are you doing? Oh, hey. Um, hey, Scotty. Why don't you take a look at this real quick? What is this? Uh, it's an eviction notice. What? Yeah, so, I was a little afraid to tell you. Well, afraid's not the right word. I was a little ashamed. Um... Working two jobs and trying to keep you on top of your grades and stuff in school is not easy. And I've had this for about two weeks, and um, what? we gotta leave a couple days after Christmas. That that's less than a week. I know, and I should have I should have told you this earlier, but I just it's hard stepping into Dad's shoes since he left. You and, shouldn't have to. Yeah, but do you blame him? Our our mom died. So? That doesn't mean you leave your kids. In fact, it's when you stay with your kids more than ever. I, I hear you. And I'm praying that if, if that happened to me, that I wouldn't make the same decision. But how can I blame him? Do you remember how many times mom had to forgive all the people that stabbed her in the back? Do you remember when Aunt Lisa went ahead and, and took her car and wrecked it? And she forgave That's her. That's not the same thing. That's her sister. That's not the same. Wrecking a car and leaving your kids are two very different things. I hear you, but what I'm trying to say is that I'm just remembering how much mom forgave everybody because she believed in Jesus and what he did for her. Please, and I'm sorry about us. Scotty, come on, just hear me out, please. I'm starting to think that 
we can't hold on to this bitterness forever. It's not possible. And it's, it's not doing us any favors whatsoever. And you know what? I've been praying for a while now. <laughs> I have. You can laugh all you want. I've been praying for a while now. And I believe that God's going to make a way for dad to come home and restore our family. God forgot about us. Okay. He hasn't forgotten about really? us. Really? I'm positive. Then why are we here right now? Having this conversation. He's gone. We're getting evicted because you have to support, which is not fair at all to you. It's not. It's I how just, has he remembered us? I understand that it's not fair, but sometimes God is silent. But that doesn't mean that he's not there. You're no. You're not right. You're wrong. You're wrong about that. I'm not wrong, and I think that it's time for you to step up and 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 actually forgive him. No. Even if he let's say let's say he doesn't come back, right? He's not. Okay but he is. Let's say that when he comes back, and hypothetically, if he doesn't, right? There's no way you're gonna keep this bitterness in your heart no. for the rest of your life. Maybe not, but what difference does it make? It makes a no. lot of... No, you Stop. know what? Come no, on. take this, I'm, I'm not doing this, I'm not. I'm not doing this. Father, I need you now. I don't know what to do anymore. I asked you to help me, Lord. You gave me a word and I know that it seems crazy. But I asked, Lord, that you would teach me to trust you. That you would teach me to, to, to trust the, the still small voice that you've been speaking to me. Not only about my father, but about my sister as well. You would teach us to forgive, just as your son forgave us. In Jesus' name. Even in the middle of a trial, God hears our prayers when we cry out to him with our whole heart. And sometimes, he answers in ways we could never imagine. Bullocks! Of all days, why did this have to happen on Christmas Day? Seriously, especially on this road. with a mechanic shop up ahead. Thank God, hallelujah. Let's go. Hey, hey, any spirit change? Anything you nah, do? Nah, nah, bro, you smell good. Hey, yo, Merry Christmas, bum. Hey! No! Help! Somebody help! How could he do this to me? He just took, every, he took everything I have! I can't do this anymore. God, please help me. I know I've done wrong in my life, but I need you more than ever, God. Please, God, help me. Hey, sweetie. Why don't you get that man some money over there? Whatever. Please show me. Oh, thank you. God bless you. John? Yeah? I think God wants us to give that man some more money. You know what? I think you're right. I was thinking the same thing. Awesome. Give him this. Thank I'll you. stay with the kids. Okay. Um, excuse me, sir. Hello. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to give you this. Thank you. God bless you. Of course. God put it on my heart to give you some extra money. Now, if you don't mind, how did you end up here? I mean... <sighs> It's a long story. My wife died a couple years back and I ran away from home and I left my two kids and I got one son taking care of my younger daughter and I, I just haven't been home, I'm so ashamed. I, I understand what you're going through. For me, before I had my family, I was drinking in pubs all night, basically drinking myself to death until a man came up to me and talked to me about Jesus and how he died for our sins. And it just radically changed my life for the better. I met my wife, we have our two beautiful daughters. And I honestly believe that he can make a big impact in your life as well. Are you sure about that? I've tried so many different things and I, I just don't know what to do anymore. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, 
that Jesus can make a big impact in your life, just like he did with mine. So, so what should I do? Well, the first step is just to pray. Come here, brother. Father God, I thank you for this man. I thank you for keeping him alive, and I thank you for the opportunities that you've given him and you're going to give him. Father, I thank you just for me, just being able to pray over him and being able to just show him your mercy, show him your love. And I pray that you make radical change in him. In Jesus' name. David gave his life to Jesus that day. John and his family decided to bless David with some new clothes and food, but they also had one more blessing that would forever change David's life. Who is it? It's your father. Okay, who is it? Uh, Scotty? What? You have a, you have a visitor here. What? You have a visitor here. What do you mean? Just open the door. Open the door. Oh my god. Open it again. No. Open the no. door. What did I tell you? It's not possible. What did I tell you? It's not possible. Open the door! Good to be back. What, what are you doing here? Well, these young folks, they took me off of the street earlier today, gave me some new clothes, and asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and just wanted to see my family. Why? I mean, why? I, listen, I know I've been gone for a while, but after your mother passed, I didn't know what to do. I started drinking and got really depressed, and I didn't come home because I didn't want you guys to see me like that. And they told me about Jesus, and... Now I know what Jesus wants from me. He wants me to surrender and change my life. I'm, I'm a changed man. I just want to make it right to you guys. I understand. When you were gone, I started reading the Bible that mom left for us. And it talks a lot about forgiveness. And it talks a lot about how God sent his son to die for us when we were sinners. So it would be impossible for me not to forgive you. But, Scott, you just gotta give him a chance, man. I know it's been tough. I know you haven't seen him. I know he doesn't seem like your father, but he is. And he's willing to make it right. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's good to see you. Why don't, I, why don't you guys get settled? Let me take your coat. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have no idea what this means for our family. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Thank you. you want me to take your bag or not? Of course. Okay. I'll be back in a second. Mommy, Dad, do you want to see something? Of course. Uh, we're sorry for the way we acted this morning. Yeah, we were just having like spoiled birds. We get the true meaning of Christmas now. Now, I wanted to say, we are sorry. The way that we treated you throughout the years was pretty, pretty bad. We treated you like spoiled brats, just giving you whatever you like. And for that, we do take responsibility. It's okay, guys. We do forgive you. When all was said and done, everyone learned something that they will remember forever from that Christmas day, and that is, we can find hope in God through the gift He has given us in the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. Anything is possible when we choose to believe in Him and His Word. Whether you're praying for the salvation of a family member, or like me, praying for the restoration of a family, 
Maybe you're praying for freedom of an addiction or a habit that you've had for years. Trust in Jesus. Give him your life. He will not fail you. He never has, never will. Merry Christmas.